The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. What's up, everybody? Uh, really excited for the webinar today with Yoni from Gatita. We're going to go ahead and, and give everybody about uh, you know four or five minutes, a few minutes just to kind of uh, bring everybody in. We, we see the numbers jumping a lot. Really good attendance here, Yoni. I'm, I'm excited about this. Um, yeah. Can everybody do me a couple of, uh, a favor or a couple of favors? Go ahead and in the chat, let me know if you guys can can see our screen and if you can see our faces, and make, let me know if you guys can can hear us okay. And alongside of that, uh, we always love to kick things off and know uh, figure out where the heck people are from. So love to know uh, if you guys want to drop drop in some some notes about where you guys are from. It'd be uh, yeah, be really good to know where you guys are coming from. So. Yes, I hear. Yes, yep, yes. We can see and hear. Man, it's uh, hopefully they get my good side. Yoni, how you doing, man? I'm doing great. Happy to be here. Yeah. Kara, you know, Kara says we're looking good. You know what? I feel good, man. It's uh, it, it's it's Tuesday. Actually, it's uh, it's today Tuesday, right? I think it is, yeah. Taco Tuesday. We, we Taco gotta, Tuesday, man. So what's the six percent about? We got six percent off all the tacos in America today. Now, all the tacos in America. You can tell them that Take a Metric sent you to go get some discounted tacos. <laughs> we uh, no, so we'll talk about it. But tacos is total advertising cost of sale. It actually shows uh, you your ad spend into total revenue. So how much of your total revenue is spent on advertising? Six percent is actually the average across our clients. So so we have our uh, we have Drew from Arkansas. Um, Minneapolis, St. Paul, John, really good to have you, man. I, have you, Yoni? Have you been to Minneapolis? Unfortunately, not yet. I'm. Uh, I know that. Uh, what's his name is from there? Uh, David Letterman. Oh, is he? I did not know yeah. that. Yeah, he likes to also uh, race in cars in India. I think also. Oh, I think India yeah. from Indianapolis, right? Yeah. Well, um, yeah. We, you have Indianapolis, Indiana, and then you have Minneapolis, uh, Minnesota. So St. Paul, I know. Yeah, but it's uh no, I, I went there twice this year, once to speak at a conference, the other to visit some agencies there, and I was super supremely impressed by how awesome Minneapolis is. I love um, the Midwest. Uh my mother uh, is from Detroit. Oh yeah. Michigan. Yeah. So whenever I go visit there, people are just in the Midwest. So if I go to Chicago, they're very warm, accommodating. I'm here in New York now. I just went for lunch down the street. It's so aggressive. Um, so aggressive. <laughs> for better or worse, you know, everything congested. Uh, people are, you know, hectic. I was also hectic. I had to get to the webinar and make sure, you know, I get my order on time. I eat it properly. I clean up. I go. It's all hectic, like a, one big factory of people. Oh, I love um, it. Hey, Josh, what's up, man? I saw, saw the, the shout out there. Good, good to see you, brother. Um, hey, guys, I want to know if anybody else thinks uh, Yoni is correct when it says New York New Yorkers are aggressive. <laughs> let me know let me know <laughs> um, it's, like actually, it's a good poll andrew andrew from cities andrew hey what do you from we want to hear yoni say ufta say what uh say ufta 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 <laughs> ganson we're striking out here buddy um ufta uh ufta ufta U ufta God, we sound absolutely ridiculous. Garrett, thanks for, for this. Um, well, guys, let's do this. One more minute, and then we'll officially kick off here. Uh, by the way, Yoni, I love the the, the, the uh, Gatita swag you have there. I need a pop-up band. You guys are in my house right now. Uh, I'm going to work on something. You, I, I like the kettle. I think it's a kettle on you all. I, you know, yeah, yeah, man. That. It's pretty good. I, I lived in Austin for a few years. Um and uh, yeah, we went. We got that from the, the flagship Yeti store. But um, folks, nice. let's let's uh, let's kick this bad boy off. Um, actually, we already have a question here. Um, not sure about oh, in the Midwest. Cool. All right, folks. Thank you all so much for joining us here today uh, to kick things off. Uh, we, if you guys found yourselves here, I'm hoping that you guys are trying to, to, to be here for the Gatita and Take a Metrics webinar. Actionable last minute strategies to optimize your Amazon channel before the holiday craze. Uh, just to kick things off about you know who we are, I'm the dapper gentleman on the left, uh, Jason McGee, Director of Business Development here at Take a Metrics. Uh, Yoni, tell us about the man, the myth, the legend. Um, just a cheap, uh, cheap uh, operating officer and the co-founder of uh, Getita. Getita, it's an acronym. It stands for Get IDA, which is uh, Get Intelligent Data Analytics. 
Um, should I tell what we do a little bit or? Yeah, absolutely, man. I- I'm a fanboy uh, of Gatita. Uh, I know you're also a fanboy taking Bedrick. So, uh, you know, yeah. it's always nice when somebody else can talk about it. But um, yeah, go ahead and give it give a quick uh, explanation here before we jump in. Got it. So uh, Gatita, essentially, we're a data company, a technology company. Um, but we also have a very extremely popular service um, for, um, you know, FBA reimbursement recovery. So basically, we grab the data of sellers and uh, we we go through it. We uh, we scan it, make sure everything's okay. And if there's any issue, we uh, we have a service that in opens cases on behalf of the sellers to get the recovery for the sellers. They're all the reimbursements. Uh, my background is in also uh, in, in my past. It's retail. I managed a division that did um, over 20 million a year in sales, uh, which was a part of a larger group that did over 100 million. And I was uh, I think I kind of mentioned to Jason earlier that um. You know, we were using Ticometrics along the way. Actually, not at the early beginning because you were guys were not around. But the moment we came around and we started using Ticometrics, I think it told us also to Alistair, it's like, you know, the light turned on on the business. The visibility that we got was so strong and powerful. We just propelled to, you know, we skyrocketed. Yeah. It was an awesome I experience. So I, 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 you know, I appreciate the fact you're out there. And I'm really excited that today we're, we're actually able to do something together and yeah. help other sellers. Now, this is the first of many things. Look, uh, here, here's what it comes down to. We are a data science company. This happens to specialize in leveraging world-class data to help sellers automate and optimize advertising. You all are a data science company that just so happened to focus currently on on reimbursements, running P&Ls, and essentially it's making sure that like, here's a crazy stat just to kick things off. And I'm going to, you know, this is what I, I learned from you. On average, whatever your revenue is uh, on Amazon, on FBA. On, excuse me, on FBA, consider about 1% to 3%. 1% to 3% of your FBA uh, revenue is eligible potentially on average for reimbursement. Katira helps you not only recognize that, but actually apply for the refunds manually to get it back. So I'm very excited to, to kick off today. We have a lot to cover, so we're going to move try and move quick, pretty quickly here. So um, agenda. I'm just going to fly through these for the essence of time. But did you know Amazon may owe you money? Uh, we've obviously talked about that a little bit. Actionable tips on how to lower fees and streamline your workflow using FBA with actionable tips for Q4. Um, tips for packing lean and smart that should also help for Q4 as well. Calculating your P&L. And then on, to the, uh, on the take a metric side of the house, what can prime day data tell us about uh, an advertising? Hint, you can leverage this data immediately how to structure campaigns for, uh, for Q4, um, maximizing ROI, and then how and when to leverage promotions here. Um, great. So I know I can't see everybody's hands, but uh, I, I'm sure a lot of folks <clears throat> like prizes. We are doing two things here, uh, one of which we've never done. Yone, I to give it to you for this. Number one, we're both, we've both put together extremely powerful offers uh, that we're going to give to everybody who stays at the end. Um, and that's going to be, be a freebie from, from both companies. Ours is in particular is going to be focused on both of us that really on value, not about salesy. It's like, look guys, Q4 is tough. Let's make sure that we just provide the value that, that, and, and help you all as much as we can. Number two, um, uh, Yoni's great idea. We are doing random trivia. And what we're going to do is throughout, we're going to, throughout the slides, we're going to throw in random slides, which are trivia questions. Everybody who answers them correctly, we are going to give away for each question, uh, randomly give away a $25 Amazon gift card. Anything you want to add to that, Yanni, here? Um, so if you uh, you know of your friends that can benefit from this, uh, th- this presentation and also from uh, the rewards, tell them now. You know, Send the links around to, to join uh, the webinars, and the more the merrier. The more people will learn, uh, the better they will get, and they'll get, they'll win, they're will going to win some prizes, and just going to be a fun blast experience. So let's I love enjoy it. everybody. I love it. Stacy, Chris, I see your questions. I promise we'll get to them, but uh, we'll, we'll tailor them right, right when we start uh, diving into this as well. So um, how about we go ahead and kick one off right now? What is the amount of Chinese sellers on Amazon USA? Guys, go to the chat, type in A, B, C, or D. And then we'll be selecting somebody at random here. So I'd love to see you all. Um, perfect. I see them coming in. One more one more second here. Boom. You see all these responses already? Yoni was worried nobody was going to gonna come in and chime in here. I, I told him that, that we have a very loyal following here. Got it. We got some cool. killers. We got some killers. Yeah, it's we good. do. We do. So we're going to select one of you guys, give you a $25 gift card. Boom. Free money. Let's start off with some noteworthy dates here, Yoni. 
Uh, October 1st, already behind us, officially start to Q4. Right now, between the 1st and 21st of November is the holiday kickoff. 22nd to 28th is the Black Friday countdown. 28th is the, thank- is the Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving here in the States. Uh, 29th is Black Friday. Still to be determined. There is going to be a last day of the year eligible to ship to FBA for the holiday season. Um, I'll go through into that specifically. December 2nd is Cyber Monday. 3rd through 14th, there's 12 days of deals. Uh, this is explained to me as Amazon actually starts to, start to run deals every day um, and, you know, to really start sprucing up the, you know, the, the holiday um, the, the holiday purchase, purchasing. 5th through 23rd, last minute deals. 22nd, the start of Hanukkah. Um, 21st, last day to order Prime Standard to be in time for Christmas. 25th is Christmas Day. And do not forget end of the year deals. It does not stop at Christmas. It keeps going, folks. So, um, let me put one word here. I'm I'm, I'm curious how it's going to play out now that Amazon made Prime Day instead of two days, one day. I wonder how it's going to affect sales, if that's going to boost it up even more, especially on the day or two before Christmas. It'll be interesting yeah. to see the data afterwards. <clears throat> it will. It will. I mean, they're always tinkering as well. So, mm-hmm. speaking of that, lastly, here's where the cutoff dates were. Uh, inventory for Black Friday and Cyber Monday, as of last year, was the 5th which is today. So hopefully everybody already has their Black Friday and Cyber Monday um, shipments in. Inventory for Christmas shopping. Um, it needs to arrive at Amazon. This was last year uh, at the 5th. So assume it's going to be around the 5th as well. Inventory for 2019. They will not take inventory until a certain time frame to clear away um, for, you know, make way for the holidays. Um, along this as well, this is a, uh, a site that Pearl Ausch from First Choice Shipping. Pearl, oh, shout out to you. Thank you. Um, this actually tells, uh, actually keeps a lot of the dates up there. I'm not going to go to it, but I wanted to make sure that everybody had it. So, folks, I created this in a first joint at Take a Metrics. Um, shout out to our designer who helped me because I, 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 it, that did not make it this pretty. But look, it's a lot that there are a lot of different things that, that, that actually comes with being a successful seller. And you need to do all of this right. We all know, I mean, Yoni, you were a seller. You, uh, you obviously know it. Um, Here's where we're going to highlight today. We're obviously going to go into advertising, which is obviously what Take a Metrics does. Uh, you all span both logistics as well as accounting and finance as well, you know, with P&L, auditing, et cetera. This is where we're going to focus on today. We're going to cover a lot of things related to Q4 as well as things that you all need to be doing as you start looking into next year as well. So the flywheel is bigger than we think. Take a Metrics, our solution is called Flywheel. The way we look at it is if you harness incredibly powerful data science, to lower costs and improve uh, and be ruthlessly efficient with advertising, you're going to improve ad performance. If you improve ad performance, it's going to lead to more sales, which leads to more reviews, more sales rank, which means more organic traffic, which gives us more data that spins it. Folks, the world is bigger than the four walls of take a metrics. We want to make sure that our sellers are matched, are matched with the right tools to optimize to help them grow. And if sellers are then in a better position to capitalize on increased traffic and run more efficient, efficient businesses, they are able to gain momentum and spin the flywheel faster. You know, anything you want to add here? Um, enjoy the effect. Uh, you know, sometimes it's hard to believe that it can it can come, but once it does, and you're not on that flywheel effect, uh, you, f- you feel like you're surfing on strong waves. It's an uh, incredible feeling, and. Uh, the fact that you guys are involved in giving that push and to, to have the edge, it's uh, it's awesome. So enjoy yeah. the effect. Well enjoy said, my effect. man. Um, cool. So, folks, I'm gonna kick this off with a poll. Uh, Yoni, do you wanna do you wanna, you wanna announce this poll here? Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll read it out loud. <clears throat> so, um, how often do you audit your Amazon fees for accuracy and potential uh, refunds, actual reimbursements? So I am here are launching. The options. Yeah, I'm launching this right now. You all should see this on your screen. How often do you um, you audit your Amazon fees for accuracy uh, and potential refunds? We're letting these thoughts come in. Cool. I'm going to close this poll down. Share results. Wow. Some people need to go to the doctor immediately. All right. Can you all see this here? I can see it. All right. You can see the quick poll. So Yoni, real quick, what do you what do you think about this here? Um, so once a week, once a month, never. So a third of folks have never have never done this, and yeah, what what do you think about that? 
Um, surprising results. Uh, the ones who never did, um, you know, I would say it's a big red flag for your business because there's money uh, sitting out there that is pretty much yours. And uh, it's your duty, fiduciary duty uh, as business owners to uh, secure that, put it back in, 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 in your pocket so you can bring it back to your business and you keep uh, pushing it forward. If it's, you know, you can invest more in your product, more into advertising, you know, th let's say like with Tika Metrics uh, platform, for example, all these costs of doing business, uh, they're not going to get cheaper over time. So if there's money out there that's leaking, you got to make sure you secure it and, and you re recover it. If you could do it alone, that's great. If you need to, you know, support with that, you know, the services out there, Gatita is one of them, they'll be glad to and happy to help. And so it's good that we have the ability to raise the awareness. If they were not aware, it, usually it's from awareness, the lack of awareness. Now that yeah. we're going to raise that awareness and give you some uh, insights on this, uh, we're, we're pretty confident that the I, I, I love it. I, I love it. Jake, see your question. Yes, we'll be emailing out the deck and, and the recording, uh, assuming that it, it uh, go to webinar plays nice and gives us a good recording. Um, let's get right into it. Uh, your business is understanding, you know, look, there are discrepancies in the Amazon, your Amazon FBA business. Why are folks owed money, Yoni? So there's a variety of issues that can happen to uh, sellers on Sell Essential on Amazon. Uh, it relates, uh, you know, mostly with inventory and financial transactions. Uh, just to give you know a quick ideas of, of how it feels and looks like these types of issues. We'll start with the basic one: something that that got lost or damaged uh, during you know uh, the sellers they want to ship products to FBA. They ship a thousand units in Amazon instead of getting a thousand units, they get 990. So there's a discrepancy of 10 units, for example. So you got to make sure you reconcile that with Amazon. You go to Amazon, open a case. Where's the 10 units? They'll investigate. If they find it, that's great. If they don't, they'll probably, you know, give you a reimbursement. And if they do, you're able to take that and, and not incur loss. So that's the first stage, early stage. Inside Amazon's warehouse, you know, uh, things can get lost, damage, destroyed. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if, if you sell an FBA, they send, they send products out to clients, and uh, all of a sudden a client co uh, customer calls Amazon, he has an issue with the product. Amazon would just give them a refund right away. They're supposed to auto reimburse you for that after a while, but they don't. It just slips through the cracks. It's your duty to pick up on that and make sure that you get that recovery, that reimbursement. Uh, that's on you know over that's on the financial discrepancies and uh, on fees itself. Sometimes you know if you, you have a, a product on Amazon, we're going to get to that a bit later uh, more in detail. But uh, you have a, a you know a product you sell on Amazon. It's this big. It's supposed to be minimum fees of pick and pack and storage. But instead, in their system, they have a discrepancy, so and it's registered as this big, you know, three times as much. So they're gonna charge you three times the mm -hmm. fees. So they're overcharging you. You gotta account for that also. Got it. This is very, very good. Um, one question for you. I know we obviously talked about FBA, and look, the reason why FBA, not FBM, this is an opportunity, is because FBA is one who handles your warehouse. Or your, I mean, they warehouse your goods, so they they obviously have insurance on. Which, by the way, can you drop that nugget actually? I didn't realize this, but one of the reasons that Amazon attracts you to use FBA is they actually insure your stuff up to five thousand dollars a unit, right? Right. With I mean, FBA essentially it's a fulfillment by, uh, by Amazon. Is, it's a program. So uh, in that program, basically they're telling you there's coverage. Every unit product that you send to us, it's covered uh, to a value of up to five thousand dollars. So up to five thousand dollars per unit level. They're going to secure it for anything that happens. Uh, they do that to make sure that you know there's trust. You know today everybody trusts Amazon already, but in the early stage. I remember the first shipments we did seven, eight, nine years ago. Like, what well, if something's gonna happen? Like, oh, don't worry, there's insurance for that. We're gonna reimburse you. So that Got is it. kind of a basic understanding of, of the background. I love it. John asked, uh, when is it worth it to go through an FBA reimbursement process? First off, I mean, look, think think about it this way. If your F whatever your FBA business is, or whatever business you do in FBA, apply the general one to three percent rule. If that money matters to you, then it's worth going through the process, I would assume, right, Yoni? Um, well, let's put it into numbers. If you do a million dollars a year, so one to three percent will be ten to thirty thousand dollars worth of reimbursements. Is that worth it? Eligible for. Uh, yeah, so that, that's that's power right there. And look, but and, and oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, it's a great question he asked because it's an important question because there's there's limited time to open a case and get reimbursed, meaning they expire. So Amazon gives a window for most cases eighteen months of look back, so you can get reimbursements. Beyond that, it's expired. So you don't want any of that to expire. You got to make sure that you do it on a timely basis. Um, there's also types of uh, cases that are nine months. You have nine months, a window of nine months to uh, take care of it. And some of them, they have only 90 days. So whoever does, uh, you know, uh, auditing once a quarter or yeah. once a year or never, they're they're pretty much yeah. I can guarantee they're, they're leaving money out and on the table. Yeah. And the other thing I'm going to say very quickly on that as well is you obviously can do it yourself. 
and we give some step-by-step guides to do it. That's also why companies like Katia exist. So I'll go ahead and plug you there. But again, you can do it yourself. We'll go through it. But interest of time is to keep this going. Um, second quiz, what is the overall U.S. Uh, size of the uh, – the, 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 I can't even speak. What is the overall U.S. retail size of e-commerce sales? Uh, let's see some of those uh, those answers uh, come here. I'm, g- I'm going to refine it. So the size of all the retail in the United States, what's the share of e-commerce? There Pretty we much go. that's the question. Great, great. Seeing some questions come in or answers come in. Perfect. All right, folks, we'll come right back to you on that. Tip number one, package lean, smart, audit weight and dimension fees. Okay, we're going to start with the basics. You know, when you use uh, utilize the FBA program, the fulfillment by Amazon, obviously you're sending products in. So you start with the basics. When Whenever you send a product in, whether you're a reseller, you're the private label seller, <clears throat> you're the factory. Sometimes, you know, you got you know, actual factories doing it. Um, you got to understand that the game of brick and mortar retail, where you have to kind of create a product or, 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 or package it to put it on the shelf. So it screams, buy me. Those days are over. The new days, the Amazon days, you do it on the listing itself with the way it's presented the EBC, it. yeah, and actually the ppc how you present your ads and everything like that that is how they actually that is the product on the shelf that's how they it screams by me so, so once you secure yeah your your point here just to, to, to just so everybody knows is look your point here is like the buying is done on the website i mean obviously don't just throw it in, in a poly bag and do nothing else like it, you still need to be like yeah you know make it nice beautiful. make it elegant but, but make it lean but, and, but if you have a yoga like like a yoga ball or a big ball you don't want to sh- you don't want to ship it um when it's it's full weight because amazon's gonna charge you out the for it the wazoo right? yeah. yeah 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 you want to roll it up roll it up make it lean make it small yeah. you know i uh, hear actually in this uh, uh slide right here it tells you of a uh, you know a simple example you have a uh, uh a basketball instead of sending it inflated so it's this big you 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 know make sure it's deflated so it's this big and in terms of weight and dimensions it's the lowest level so you'll incur less and less fees over time because the fees will be pick and pack when amazon picks a product and sends it sends it to the customer and also storage I which kind of leads us to yeah which leads us to the next uh, event uh, or point is um basically after you you made sure that you're you know you're sending it as lean and small as possible um you got to make sure you you track consist- consistently uh, track uh, um, the weight and dimensions that Amazon has on your products. So in order to do that, what you can do, we have we provide a free tool in our website. If you can see on the bottom, it says um, page.gatita.com slash dimensions. Anybody can go there. They can download a free template where uh, you you can put all the ASINs, SKUs, and the weight and dimensions is for, you know, <clears throat> that you, you need to basically bring your own data. So if you're the manufacturer, if you're the private label seller, you should, you should know it for sure. If you're a reseller for big brands, it's out there. If you go to like big brands on the website, you find the data. Um, make sure you track it. You have that data. You download Amazon's reports on the same ASINs and you compare. Whenever you see a discrepancy, which is not in your favor, it's a red flag. You reach out to Amazon. Make sure they correct the winner dimension so they stop overcharging yeah. you just, and you uh, file for reimbursement. That's it. So just to bring it back as well. So what you're saying, though, is, look, you upload your fees. You may have could have fat fingered it and, and entered it wrong. Amazon just could have classified it wrong. Make sure there are no discrepancies. So what you're not getting overcharged for things you, uh, things you didn't do. No, it's actually a good point because you might initially give them the correct information, but over time it might change. And a simple example for that, if you send in a handbag and it has like a little, you know, thing that's flopping around, like, you know, the, the satchel itself, yeah. then that, the scanner that they use might think of it instead of being, being this big, it's going to create a distortion. So it's going to it's gonna register as this big. That's how so this kind of thing happens. This is why you audit it. I love it. That's what you got to keep auditing. You got to keep oh. uh, your hands on the trigger, yeah. And this is also the thing that actually drives the most fulfillment costs are related to these fees or related to dimensions. Perfect. Absolutely. Um, pick and pack is the highest thing you'll pay, and that's involved the way in dimensions. So you got to have a, a strong grip on it. So why this matters for Q4 is Amazon, and again, this is another thing. Can you actually talk about Amazon shipping fees and how they increase during Q4? Um, so, uh, it's, it's not necessarily the, the, the shipping fees, it's actually the handling fees. So if you send products uh, to FBA, the next slide or the one other, uh, kind of touches that point. Okay. Well, um, we'll, get to, we'll get to it then. I'll we'll get to it. Okay. So, so this is the next guys, question. Another, another question. What is the rate of customers who order via mobile in, in the U S it's a powerful question. It is a powerful question. Uh, Michelle with an early answer. I, I like it. I want to put a little point on this. The reason it's so important, this actually is this uh, trivia question, is because that, you know, a lot of you guys are focusing on your advertising and your listing and everything like that. 
So here's a small tip. Whenever you do any update on your listing or even the first time you created it, make sure you have a tablet or your phone right next to you. The first place you check should not be even on your PC or desktop or Apple. It should be on the cell phone because that's where the, the money is. That's where the business is. It's kind of, a, I'm, I'm kind of giving away the question. I, 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 you gave away the answer, people who are listening. But look, you're a good point, right? This is the point of having strong product images. Like you should be able to make a purchase decision based off images. Mobile, you, your bullets don't even display, right? So you right, actually right. have to go looking for them. Therefore, optimized to mobile, optimized to mobile. At every given point, your ads, your your bullet point, whatever it is, make sure how it looks on mobile and optimize as much and refine it as much mm -hmm. as possible all the time. Come on, man! I thought you were just a data company. What are you doing talking about images? I mean, good man, good, man, uh, man. good tips are never 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 get old, you know. No, I hear you. I mean, you've 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 lived the life, right? You've been a seller. Uh, tip number two. Okay, so this is where we're you know you kind of uh, jump starting uh, the gun on this one. So uh, what you want to avoid, man. It's good. It's uh, you know, it's 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 a money saver. You gotta avoid FBA manual processing and replacement server fees. If you guys never heard of this, so this is a this is this is gonna be the point where we're gonna raise the awareness once again. Let's slide on to the next one so we can see what it looks and feels like on on Seller Central. So once you guys create an FBA shipment, uh, um, you know, on Seller Central, on the last stages of the shipment, Amazon is gonna pretty much tell you, um, give me the the box content, meaning every box you send in. Uh, you know, let's say you're sending in 10 boxes. They want to know exactly what's in, in each box, you know, which SKUs, which ASINs, and what's the quantity of them. If you don't tell them during the year, they're going to charge you 10 cents a unit to receive the products in their warehouse. But November, December, they're going to bounce it up at 50%. So it's going to be 15 cents instead of 10 cents. So this is a, you know, a word of caution. And over here, you see in this example, it's 490 units, 10 cents, it's $49 you pay. Actually, it's it, it's 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 worth it to avoid it. And why? Let's say you're sending in 10,000 units. Instead of paying a thousand, you will pay 1,500 in November, December. But it's it's kind of kind of sucks. Why? Because it's going to take longer for the inventory to be received to be in stock, and you're going to have to pay for that privilege of them receiving it on the box level. So, if you can avoid it, make sure to avoid it at all costs because it's 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 it can be a, a dream which you don't need at this point. Yeah, absolutely, 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 and. Um... Yeah, sorry, your next slide here. Yeah, so this is a, another type of uh, fees you should probably be aware of and avoid. Uh, it's called FBA placement fees. So there's two options to send a product to FBA. Uh, the first option, which you want to avoid, you just send all you have to Amazon in bulk. Actually, let me, let, me, let me preface this too. For those who care about Q4, we want to do two things. We want to save time and we want to save money. Is that right? 100%. So all, anybody who has something to ship to Amazon Yoni, go ahead and tell them how they actually could take care of hit hit you know take care of two birds of one stone here. Right. So, so to make it simple, you want to you want your inventory to be there as soon as possible with the least cost as possible. So you got to be aware of the things that might be an obstacle to that. So we we discussed the the uh, you know the box content. The next the next point is pretty much uh, making sure this is actually going to give you the example how to do this on your account. Uh, I'm just going to go through. You see the one, two, three points. You can go over yeah. it and and let's go to the next slide because once you click on number three, which is edit, it's going to look like this. If your account is set up on this option, you're good to go. That's a check mark. Yeah. If it's listed on the bottom option, which it says inventory placement service, um, that's not good for you. That means that they're gonna, you're gonna send it all in bulk to Amazon. It's gonna take more time for the inventory and to be in stock. Gonna, and it's gonna cost you more. So you're saying- It's probably gonna cost you an arm and a leg. It's really pricey. It's like yeah. every unit is a few dollars, so, so you really wanna avoid this, that. Think about this way. Everybody's trying to enter in a mad dash to, to not not run out of stock, um, to get ahead of, uh, of uh, of you know the the, the Q4 oh, rush. Right. That, so what you're saying is instead of just sending it to one fulfillment center, just tell them you'll route it and you'll send packages out wherever they need to go. Yeah, they'll tell you. Yeah, to send it to here, send it there. You'll you'll be that. I remember. You know, yeah, yeah, I remember. I, I did this too because I remember I ran a brand on Amazon. That's what I was doing. I I would go to the UPS store and I'd ship boxes all over the damn place. Um, wow. No, I I love it. Uh, tip number three. Okay, so uh, here's a quick tip on basically, like we said, you know, we have a, a large number of uh, attendees in this webinar that said they never uh, audited, um, you know, their account ever. So this is a quick tip on how to basically understand where you're at. So this is going to show you how to calculate the total FBA reimbursement that you have currently right now as a part of your yearly FBA sales. Because uh, like I think we mentioned before, it was an auto reimbursement to sellers, right? So you're going to see reimbursements in your account no matter what. Um, but the rest of it, they're telling you you need to basically secure on your own. So this is a quick guide how to check where you're at. Um, so we, we're going to send this to you all, so we don't need to walk through it step by step. But essentially, look, Yoni, this is so gracious of you to 
literally give them the step by step guide how to do this. Um, right, so, this yeah, so this step, this step right here, it's in black. We're gonna, you know, we can pass through it. But, uh, uh, anybody can take the the presentation to go over it. But it's gonna show you how to grab your yearly sales in 2000, you know, for the yearly level. So this specific example is for 218. Um, this is, you know, how to grab the reports and what to do with them. But we're gonna jump to the gray box on the right to actually kind of see the numbers, understand yeah. once we pull up the data how it looks like. So this, uh, in this particular uh, case study, uh, the yearly uh, FBA revenue for this account was 4.9 million, uh, and there was $112,000 worth of reimbursement in that year. Okay, so 112,000 divided by 4.9 is about 2.28%. Like I said earlier, we see the spectrum usually going between one to 3%. In uh, uh, this case, this, this uh, seller account is almost like in the middle. Um, so what you're so saying is doing this review, you can go back the year or up to 18 months as it is today, and you can tell them, look, here are all the here are the discrepancies. Here's how much money, and and it's free for them to do an audit with you, right? Yeah, for us, anybody can come in at any time, do a free audit. We'll give a free estimate of how much we can uh, secure and recover it's for the free. sellers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Charge. Our model is pretty straightforward. Where there's no su subscription, there's no upfront fees. It's only if we actually successfully get the sellers reimbursed, we take 25% of the recovery. So, yeah. Hey, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I was just going to... Yeah, so that's, that's the model. So we are always incentivized to make sure that we, we do the maximum possible uh, for the sellers to empower yeah, them. Make take sure. a percentage of it, yeah. Yeah, we're working the percentage. So, so if, if we're not fruitful, there's no cost. If we are, um, we'll take our fee. I forget who it was. Uh, there, there was a question that was asked about what makes you different than, than other folks. What I will say, just, you know, just, just to put it in, in my own words, is look, there's an art and a science behind this. The science is the data. Do you know, like, do you know where to look and what is eligible to get reimbursed and, and make sure that you're, 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 you're keeping the marketplace honest? That's what you all do very well. When it comes time to actually filing in the claims, it's very important that you actually put in a manual touch. You're trying to do, look, you're just trying to keep everybody on the same page and, and like issues happen, right? Like we don't want to do is flood Amazon with, with, all, with all these requests. Like you, and, and worse, like not giving a personal touch. This is what you all specialize in, right? Right. So uh, it's it's a few valid points that you mentioned. It's it's if you do something, you gotta make sure you do it right. So like we said, there's you know claims that tend to expire. So if you guys don't have a good grip on it, you 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 gotta you gotta make sure you do it on timely matters. So we always do it constantly for the for you know the clients. It's yeah. uh, it's constant, so you never uh, lose touch yeah. on that. And then question: Taylor asks, what is the average reimbursement rate? I'm uh, um, like I said, the spectrum That'd runs be between one, one, one to three percent. So each, each yeah, each one has their own numbers, their own sales of volume, and but you know, rule of thumb is between one to three uh, percent yeah. will be the recovery rate. Um, just to add Got to it. the question from before, what makes us different? I would say what makes us different, uh, Gatita, from the rest is simply you guys, the sellers, and why we pretty much work with all the spectrum from the smallest to the biggest of the big in the industry. And we always stay attentive. Our ears are really open to the problems and the challenges you guys experience. So the, we're, we're pretty much crazy about solving problems. So the moment we solve a problem, a certain type of issue successfully, all the way, uh, right away we take that knowledge, that know-how and, and do the audit all across the rest of the sellers, the community basically, to make sure we clean those issues as well for them, even if they're not aware of. So any anytime these uh, issue types of issues you know, arise, we know about them, we're able to give that value and pass it around. I so our it. powers is, is with our community and our sellers and, and listening and, and staying attentive and bring the know-how and the muscle to keep doing it constantly. So you're always maximizing it. the recovery. Cool, and then on to the next tip here, calculate your pay. Now, I know we're gonna go through this pretty quickly because uh, you all probably care about what the heck's happening in Q4 and less about this in general, but, uh, you actually have been really gracious enough to give them a full template of this, right? Yeah, this is just a, a tool. We, later on, uh, Jason is going to pass it around with the actual Excel file. The numbers here are just duds. You know, this is just to kind of uh, wash your eyes on it. But uh, no business can really operate properly without knowing their numbers. In order to know your numbers, you need to basically constantly calculate your profit and loss. Uh, depends on your volume, but uh, you know, even if you're a small volume, do it at least once a quarter. Know what's going on with your cost, cost of doing business. There's a triangle doing business uh, as an e-commerce seller it's a triangle you got to make sure you know your sales your margins and cost of business once you're yeah. attentive to all three you're always going to be a winner always going to the moment you know you're able to gauge all that and to make sure that the bottom line is profit and then you take all these actions you know to be mm -hmm. efficient and lean and, and reduce cost you'll be able to confirm that profits are going so this is a tool we're going to pass around later uh, highly recommended uh, just, you know, you can awesome. later on the, the Excel, you can customize it for your own needs, the entries, you know, not everybody has the same entries, but this is, this touches like 
the bulk majority of the issues. I love it. And then one last question from Sean. Customer damage and warehouse damage are eligible for reimbursement. Is that correct? That is correct. And, yeah. and, and at what value? Is it the, the listing price? Perfect question. Yeah, Amazon, when it reimburses uh, the sellers, it it, uh, it gives the same value as if you sold it on Amazon. So yeah, if, let's say you're, supposed, you're selling it on $100 on Amazon, the, your product, um, they're going to give you uh, basically $100 minus you know the, the selling fees and the FBA fees. So let's say after fees, it's like 20% fees, 25%, you'll get $75 or $80. So it's a great question, valid question. It's essentially, Amazon is buying it off your hands. So it, by getting reimbursed, you secure two things, your cost of goods and your profit and your margins. So it, you should never give away that option. It's not like you're yeah. just losing your cost, you're losing your profits because you invest the money, you need to get ROI, return on investment on, on your funds, the money that you invest in that inventory. And so it's very important to secure that and, and we'll help with that as well. And, and Josh had a good question. What about when if you get an email say address not deliverable? Is there a refund for that? Email or shipping address? Uh, the sh I assume the shipping address. So, they so actually... yeah, if Amazon ships to a customer uh, and, and pretty much uh, in transit something happened for whatever reason, it could be also it wasn't a deliverable shipping address. But at the end of the day, that unit, that product never went back into your inventory. It's eligible. It I was under it. Amazon's responsibility and something went wrong. You, you took a hit on that. You can get recovery. Josh, out here, answer your questions, buddy. That's what we're doing here. Um, all right, round it out on your side. Um, this is a case study that you did for a client last year. Uh, they did $18 million in revenue through FBA. You were able to find almost 9,000 units that were uh, essentially affected inventory, which was 2.81% of their total inventory, right? Between that one to 3% range. You were yeah, able this to get on the top range, Jim. Yeah, and this is $151,000 you're able to, to, to get reimbursed for claims. What did this do to their profit? Right. So now if we have, you know, we have a PL tool, we can, uh, they, if you're able to see the, the profit before the reimbursement was, uh, was uh, 1.3 million, <clears throat> the reimbursements added 151,000, which in percentage wise was almost 11%. So that, you know, one and a half percent of reimbursement rate improved the bottom lines by almost 10 X, 10 times from, you know, um, yeah, I mean, sorry, uh, sorry, by uh, 11%. So, you know, 1% yeah. to 11% is almost like 10 times, uh, yeah. which is crucial. That 151,000 could go, you know, building your next product line, improvement in your product line, Amazon PPC, take a metrics cost, whatever it is. Incredible, man. Incredible. Um, all right. What is Amazon's share of the U.S. e-commerce market? Uh, next $25 giveaway here. Um, so I'm trying to answer some questions here or read some questions here at the same time. Stacey, I see your question. Uh, you had a question for me as well I'll get to. Um, that's a pretty long one. I love it. Um, um, while we wait for the answer, what can you do to ensure the reimbursement actually comes? I mean, the one thing I'll say is with Gatita, you guys can't make money if money doesn't come, right? Right. It's, it's, a, it's a great question because you got to make sure you audit the reimbursements themselves because sometimes they'll say, here, here's $100. Here's your even your reimbursement ID. You, you then later on you check the reports. It's not there. It's another case. You got to make sure that they actually paid out. There's along the way. That's a fun, it's a financial uh, discrepancy basically. It's a great that's point. We we covered not, that as well. You yeah, we covered that as well. It, it, look, this is also why they pay you for the privilege. Like you all go to bat for them, and that's what you do uh, as well. Got it. Awesome. Great answers as well. Um. Perfect. Great. So. Folks, second poll here. Man, we look at this audience engagement. It's been incredible. What is your advertising strategy for Q4? Let me go ahead and launch this bad boy here. Um, launch poll. So, yeah, let me know when you – come on, come on, come on. All right, can you see this poll here? Increase ad spend. What, what's everybody doing here? <clears throat> Don't you love these results here, Yoni? Just being able to get it, get this in in real time. Yeah, it's awesome. I mean, I, I'm curious right now to see. Yeah. All right. Cool. So let's go ahead and share these results. Interesting. All right. So half people up to 25 percent, 14 percent none. Uh, man, that's that's really really interesting here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and hide the results. You can see my. Uh, the, you can go back to you can see the poll screen, right? The slide. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, great, great guys. Well, thanks, thanks for that. Um, so, tip number five: 
Uh, this is where I start to step in. So thanks for passing the torch here, Yoni. Expect markedly higher volume during Q4, but do not expect material increases in cost per click, uh, conversion rates, et cetera. So let's look at supply and demand in Q4. Supply are consumers, aka traffic to the site. Demand are advertisers. These are sellers and brands buying ads based on Amazon. Supply significantly outweighs demand here, which favors advertisers. Yes, there are more advertisers buying advertising, but the traffic for consumer, from consumers is significantly outpacing the, the increase in advertising, which means sellers, this is your Super Bowl. We all know this. Um, fun fact, for those who don't know, Black Friday, the reason why it's called Black Friday is because this is the first time a lot of retailers go into the black and not red uh, all year, which is where they actually make their money. The same thing is true a lot of places. Um, with, with, within Amazon as well. So let's look at prime day data. Why? Because this is a high data scenario that is an incredible, an incredible precursor to Q4. Folks, I'm about to go through data that you all can take and this ad immediately addresses how you should be impacting your budget and, and what you should be expecting uh, within Q4. Prime day, what do, we, what do we analyze? We analyze 1500 products sold by our clients. Uh, we compare that to the Monday, the previous four Mondays and Tuesdays over um, um, over uh, the previous four weeks. Each one of these products had at least one sale in those previous days. And I'm just going to make sure we have uh, some questions here as well. Uh, can can everybody see my screen here? Patricia said she couldn't. Uh, can everybody else see my screen? Yeah. Yes. All right. Everybody. Cool. Great. Sorry, Patricia. I hope you get it. I hope you get it figured out. We'll send it to you a a afterwards. But each product at least one sale. So we analyze categories broken down into three buckets, and I'm going to give you all categorical analysis that our director of insights, Andrew Weber, helped uh, lead the charge on. So for those who are focused on clothing and jewelry and shoes, home and kitchen, health and household, here are three different um, uh, data sets. Let's see what they data told us. This is the the clothing, shoes, and jewelry category. So Prime Day is blue. Uh, let's call it turquoise. And uh, non-Prime Day, let's call it coral uh, are the colors here. What happened to the cost per click? Cost per click actually lowered during Prime Day. And conversion rate? The conversion rate stayed the exact same. And I know what you're thinking, Yoni. I mean, you know this. is Everybody says, oh, it's so expensive to advertise during Q4. We're debunking that. Because we're not saying that it's, it's, it's materially higher to, to actually, you know, to, for each click in the conversion rate. Matter of fact, what we're saying is there's so much traffic. The reason why it's so expensive is because you're running out uh, of advertising because you don't have the proper budget for it. So that's clothing, shoes, and jewelry. Uh, maybe that's a one-off case. Let's actually look at home and kitchen. Same sort of setup. What happened to the cost per click? The cost per click only moderately increased from 67 to 78 cents. The conversion rate actually increased, meaning that people who came uh, to to the our clients here, and again, these are our clients, but you could expect you know relatively similar results at least directionally. The conversion rate actually increased, which is another fallacy that people think, oh, they're not going to convert. No, they're in buyer mode. They're here to buy. Health and household, third categorical analysis. What happened to the cost per click? It marginally uh, increased while conversion rate actually increased as well. So what we're actually showing you here is if you were in any of these categories, you're not going to be paying materially more. Um, uh, no, sorry, Morris, we did not skip jewelry. It was a part of, uh, of this one here. It's clothing, shoes, and jewelry. These are all combined. So I just want to at least let you know that. But essentially, going through it here, health and household, same thing moderate increase, conversion rate actually increased as well. So what does that tell us about how we budget uh, for Q4? So let's go back to the exact same categories, clothing, shoes, and jewelry, prime day and non-prime day. Let's see what happened with ad spend and total revenue. Yeah, people in the clothing, shoes, and jewelry category increased their spend by 33%. But what they saw is a 540% increase in total revenue. Yeah, that's where that it's is, at. That is tacos, my man. We'll talk about mm -hmm. tacos. Maybe yeah. it may or may not be a picture of, of some tacos in here. Um, home and kitchen. Two-day ad spend increased 
wow, okay, it's a pretty big jump, right? Well, what if total revenue grew 986% for our clients? That's total revenue, not just ad revenue. What about health and household? Clients spent 81% more, 81% uh, more, two-day revenue, 773% increase in total revenue. Chris, to answer your question about toys. Uh, we're not covering it in here, but that's also why you should subscribe to us because we're releasing a lot of really good data that you all can all get. So we're going to have more categorical, uh, categorical analysis coming. I got to leave you guys wanting some, right? Can't just give it all to you or else we're not going to be in business, right? Um, there we go. On to some tacos here. Taco time. Taco Tuesday time. <laughs> tacos versus ACOS. Everybody knows ACOS. ACOS is advertising costs of advertising revenue. It's ad spend into ad revenue. Tacos is advertising into costs into total revenue. So we're not just looking at advertising and ad revenue. We're actually looking at how it affects and moves the needle on, on total revenue. Why is this important? Because tacos captures a flywheel effect. Remember, if you optimize ad spend, it should be driving more organic growth, not just ad growth, right? That's why we're all here not to increase uh, ad revenue. We're trying to increase total revenue. We're trying to increase profitability. Our data highlights how you should be in, in viewing the impact of ad spend. The goal is not to keep a cost as low as possible. The goal is to have that right risk tolerance level where you can, you're willing to give up a certain amount of advertising uh, to achieve a total return of, 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 of total revenue. Uh, Makes sense? Yeah, exponential growth. Uh, yeah. But the timing is crucial, yeah. <clears throat> it is, it is, it is. And everything's amplified, right? Like, so if, if, uh, if you all, if, if, if you're, if you have money to advertise, like this is the best time to spend it. So not I, all have, I have to put something out there. I have to put something out there. The way I see it, you know, I'm not so savvy, but if I have to make, you know, to dumb it down a little bit, I would say, imagine you have a gold mine, right? And during the year you have, I don't know, three people clicking all day with the hammer and trying to get that gold, right? That's your ad spend. But now during the season, they tell you if you're gonna uh, basically hire uh, nine more people, four four times more, you're gonna spend more on them. But during that time, when you go into the gold mine, every punch of the wall you get, you're gonna get a lot of gold. So it's worth it to hire these a little bit more because it's pouring all around because the gold is all around. Because during the year, it's a little bit of gold here and there. But during Christmas, the money time, gold is everywhere. So the more you hire, that's your budget ad spend when you increase, it just brings back much more, so it's worth it. Yeah, 100%, man. I, I could not agree with you more. And everybody, it, it's funny. My favorite thing is folks like, oh, you know what? Like, you know, I'll, I'll wait till next year. I'll sort this out next year. It's easy to pass the buck and punt it. I mean, you're just, you're hurting your business right now. I don't, if, even if you never use Sagametrics, fine. Just take our data and be like, look, there's a, it's a worthwhile investment. If you're advertising properly with the right inputs and the right context, it's, it's really good to do so uh, as long as it's profitable and makes sense for your business. So yeah, at least do the experiment. At least do the experiment this quarter, and you'll know for sure for next year. But at least you know. You got to know. Touch the data. Go ahead. Yes, um, Morris. Do we believe in sponsored brands? Uh, um, uh, sponsored brands or sponsored products? Short of it is both, man. Um, it, it really comes down to what, what, what the question was: is is it sponsored advertising or is it sponsored brands? The whole point. It, it, look, you should be doing both. A marketplace bullshit just put out an article that showed. Um, like if you, for any sort of uh, search, sponsor brand, obviously there. And the thing is, if you're not doing it, your competitors are going to be doing it, which I'll talk about here in a second. But going back to this, um, which products should be advertised? Ones with very healthy margin that actually you can you know drive a profit. Low tacos while revenue grows, meaning you're maybe investing in advertising, but your revenue is growing at a faster clip. So your tacos is going down. Uh, gateway products are repeat buys, right? If I sell something, if I'm selling, you know, or an organic uh, freeze dried dog treat, which I sold back in the day, um, like that you don't buy them once, right? Even if you give it away for free, I mean, you're still going to get repeat purchases if it's actually a good product. Uh, when you need to clear inventory is another another very good opportunity to, to advertise as well as newly launched SKUs. So speaking of this, going to your point, Morris, uh, the internet makes it possible for any product from anywhere in the world to be on Amazon, but how do shoppers find your brand is advertising. So here's, uh, here's what I hear a lot of people say, no, I'm good. I'm already dominating their organic rankings. It's not enough. So here's an example right here. I type in slow cooker, Ninja. This is a sponsored brand advertising, formerly HSA. So if you're not advertising there, somebody's going to be doing it because that's money Amazon can be making. And then both of these are, are sponsored listings. You need to have an effective strategy for both is um, 
is uh, is uh, is exactly what your plan should be. Sorry, I cannot do two things at once. Brad, great question. Uh, you feel free to email me. Um, this is a he, his question was: Do you need to modify keywords to gain this kind of growth? Um, short answer: Yeah. I mean, it depends how your setup is. I can't speak to your setup, but Brad, if you want to come ask me, I'm happy to give you some direction here. Going back to this for the sake of time. By the way, we've held an incredible attendance rate in, in, in the upper 90s percentile, which means this is really good content. So thanks, guys. Um, what is the optimal campaign structure that, that balances maximum control with maximum scalability? Three to one audience-based campaign structure starts with at least one auto campaign and then three manual campaigns. So let's give you an example here. Let's say we take a metrics, the selling take a metrics foam pillows. We're going to have one, at least one main auto campaign. And we're going to have three types of, uh, of uh, manual campaigns. One, for our own brand. So we want to create our own uh, manual campaigns based on our own branded terms. These are take a metrics foam pillow, take a metrics pillow, um, whatever it is. Like It's a defensive strategy, right? Uh, the other one, going after your competitors. Go after the purple mattresses of the world, et cetera, because – Look, it's going to behave differently, but you want to go there and you want to ride on the coattails of their of their um, of their exposure and their traffic. And then generic, like uh, comfy foam pillow, cool foam pillow, cheap foam pillow, best foam pillow, whatever it is. Why does this matter? Seventy eight percent of searches on Amazon are generic terms. Also, generic brand and competitor terms are all going to behave differently, so they should be isolated. If I'm going there and looking for a take a metrics pillow. If I don't uh, advertise there, my competitors will. So they're going to steal my brand share. But also, too, you have to be really honest. If they're coming to search for your brand, they're probably wanting to buy a take a metrics pillow. Therefore, uh, I can expect a different ACOS, right, or a different tacos in, in that regard. Uh, going after a competitor, though, uh, is going to be the opposite. They're probably looking to buy a competitor. You may be a little bit lucky to get some of that traffic. But, yeah, it's definitely important to have a um, – uh, it, it's definitely important to have that exposure as well. Going to the next slide here, another uh, gift card we're going to give away here. We're, we're giving away a lot of money here in gift cards. That's what the final one, folks. Final one. Is it? Go for it. I'll, I'll let you lead the charge here. Okay. What uh, type of desks does Amazon employees have? Folding desks, glass desks, door desks, or no desks. But we're gonna have to. Uh, we're gonna have to explain this answer if we have time at the end. It's very important to explain it because it's it's cute. It's very cute. <laughs> I would hope to think that they don't get any desk until they earn their keep, right? Until they make until they make every one of their sellers profitable, they're not allowed to get a desk. Oh, that would be great, right? Um. Yeah, absolutely. All right. See the answers come through. Awesome. Perfect. Uh, Rebecca had a really good fun fun fact in there. I'll, I'll read that later. Tip eight, leading into Black Friday, um, you do not necessarily need to provide discounts and promos to generate revenue. This is a crazy uh, to actually think about. So during Prime Day, how did sellers adjust their price? 60% of our clients uh, did not change their price. Matter of fact, 40% of them increased their price. What do you think that actually happened? Prime Day, you're supposed to discount prices, right? Well, the ones, first off, 94% of our products grew revenue on Prime Day, but 496% was a growth of folks who did not lower their price and actually those who increased their prices. I just want to hold there for a second. So if you're not lowering your price or increasing, you still saw almost a 500% growth in total revenue. Don't get us wrong. Discounts clearly work. However, it's not the ante to play the game. Be strategic. Promotions are great if you have stale inventory or models or versions that you need to clear out. If you're launching a new product, absolutely, it's a good idea to uh, to to um, um, you know give a promotion. My favorite: if a buyer does more research or they behave differently as, in terms of their buyer journey, you can get strategic about how you do it. So let's actually give you a specific example here. I'm going to illustrate an example within the uh, the electronics category for that last bullet. So. What we have price points, the average percent of ads on page one, and the, converg the conversion share, the top three organic results, which means the organic results that they actually leave to a conversion in the sale. What are you noticing here? A majority of conversions in the electronics category occur above the fold, 
but that share goes down as prices go up. Meaning that if there's a $50 or less item, I'm more likely just to buy one of the first three organic rankings. Think about it. If I just want to buy a portable charger or if I want to buy a, a cheap widget, I'm not going to do an extensive amount of research for it. It's not like buying a $500 TV, right? But check this out. If it's $500 or more, it almost cuts it in half in terms of uh, actually who's, who's going to actually buy one of those top three. Buyers who are less impulsive that do more research, um, they may do more due diligence. It's a perfect opportunity to target a buyer. I'll give you an exact use case. Uh, around a year ago, uh, my wife and I were looking to buy a new TV. I needed these, these things that needed to be 4K, needed to be smart, all these things. I had a handful of brands that I would have bought. I wasn't loyal to just one. It came down if they had if everybody had those basic things, which had the best price. You would have dangled a carrot offering me 50 bucks to buy it. Hell yeah, I would have bought that. That's the opportunity to be strategic and give me an opportunity to actually, you know, buy one of those products. Yoni, I'm sure you probably uh probably see this uh, the same way, right? I mean, like you said, it's all about the specs. So if your your product that you're selling has, you know, kind of the nuance of specs. Uh, and you have that you know type of uh, consumer that will look for those specs and the value, then you have opportunity to to fight with the rest and give a discount and a promo. Absolutely, absolutely. Siva, very good question. Uh, which was, are we going to get uh, talk about how Katita works or demo? Uh, well, I want to make sure we focus on value here and, and make sure that we're actually conveying actually things that can help you all. I did not want to make this a sales pitch about taking measures or Katita, um, but that's a perfect transition as we uh, round out here. Uh, key takeaways, don't assume Amazon fees are always accurate. You could be owed, owed money. You can lower your FAA fees by shipping smarter, faster, leaner. Sounds like a Kanye West song. Um, <laughs> 20, 2019 Prime Day data, what can we learn uh, about this data and how can we implement it? Uh, don't expect higher CPCs or conversion rates to skyrocket just because uh, of, of, of Q4. Uncap budgets to capture the flywheel effect. And a rising tide raises all ships. Folks. Down to the offers, drum roll. Um, before, the offer, done... before the offers, uh oh, I want to give away okay. that answer for the with the door uh, with the with the what's it called with the desk uh, yeah. question. If that's okay, can I can I can I give the answer out? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so the answer is a door desk, and uh, why is that so wacky? Um, and the way I kind of discovered it was I went to visit Amazon in Seattle. You know, we gave us a tour and everything. They were really really nice. And I come to notice that the, the, the desks are like all the same, but they look like there's a door, like it's a door. So they told me the story behind it, like all the desks in Amazon's, you know, uh, offices are, are a door desk because when Jeff Bezos started the company in his garage, he didn't have a, uh, a desk. So he pulled down a door, he put on, you know, a few, uh, you know, like uh, uh, iron legs and he created a desk. And since then, all the, all the desks on Amazon are kind of the same fashion, same way. So that's yeah. a little bit of authenticity story for you guys. A couple of folks actually mentioned that. Fern, I think you were one who mentioned it and uh, and, and some other ones. This is, that's awesome. Um, it's unique, but he became the richest guy in the world, uh, you know, when he started Frugal. So you guys have the same chance. No, I, I love it. I love it. Um, cool. So down to the offers, folks. Sponsored brands, we uh, are announcing officially, I believe even tomorrow, that we actually have sponsored brands fully in-app. We've been running this for our sellers, uh, for, for uh, a handful of sellers for quite some time. We've averaged over across 70 plus brands we've been doing this for a 16% decrease in cost per click a 19% decrease in per conversion um, in cost per conversion and a 16% decrease in ACOS. We understand that, look, we're not trying to sell you anything. We understand this is an extremely busy time. Forget about whether you use us or whatever. First five people to raise their hands in the chat box. We're actually going to be offering you a free sponsor brands ad build an audit based off a deep oops, typo deal analysis of sponsored product ad data. So folks, um, if anybody who's running sponsored brands, um, I, I would uh, I would strongly recommend you all jumping in here and and uh, and requesting it. Uh, just feel free to, to come in and I'll check it I'll check it later. See who the first five were. Uh, great. That's all from my side. Over to Gatita. Uh, okay, just to make it simple for you guys, anybody at any given time, you can always uh, you know reach out to us and get a free audit. We'll give an estimate how much we can recover. But beyond that, today we can give you as you know a special offer is that um, basically the first four hundred dollars that we recover for you guys as sellers is going to be on us. So no matter what, you sign up for the service, 
you're gonna make $400 sooner than later, hopefully. All right, that's gonna be on us. Just make sure you use the coupon code TICA100 uh, during sign up. You're gonna see uh, like a promo box there. Make sure to use it, and it's gonna be value all around. You know, if you like the service, free. you're welcome to stay. If, it's free yeah. money, man. Like I don't understand why no. Like if you're here and you're a seller, or if you're an agency that represents sellers, it behooves you just to see what you're owed. And if it's material, great, go forward with it. If it's not, that's fine. At least you know you've done your due diligence, right? Exactly. So, yeah, you nailed, you nailed it. Yeah. Well, you owe it to yourself. You owe it to yourself. Just check it out. You know, we'll be happy to help. Yeah. Well, guys, I know we actually, man, Yoni, I didn't think we would do it, man. We kept it to an hour. We did answer um, a lot of questions on the way. Time. If uh, um, Siva said for a Gatita audit, do you, do you need reports or access to data through API? That would, I assume you add them as a, as a user and add them on, uh, or excuse me, uh, you know, edit permissions on their API, right? Yeah, it's a good point. So when you sign up for the service, you're going to get a dashboard. In the dashboard, you're going to see visibility of, you know, how much we can uh, recover and some more data points so you can take uh, for the benefit of your business. But it's all done through API, yeah. Awesome. And answers break down uh, just uh, to round it out here. Um, yeah, these are the answers. Question. Yeah, what was the – that going back to, I guess, the very first uh, D, that uh, was – Yeah, the, the Chinese, 40% uh, of Amazon sellers in the United States are from China, based out of China. So know who you're dealing with. They got resources. That they're, 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 they're powered by the government with a lot of subsidiaries. And that these are factored with a lot of muscle and, and, and capital behind and them. And to be honest, uh, like in people – look, people are building some, – some of the best brands are trying to anchor, for instance – Ex yeah. Google employee. Great example. Great yeah. example. Ex Google employee Based out of China. relocated back to Shenzhen, I believe. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's uh, it's incredible. So, folks, I wanted to say, uh, do it, Drew. Thanks. I appreciate that. Uh, you know, free money, folks. Thank you all so much. We really appreciate it. Again, Jason McGee at Takeometrics. My email is J McGee M A G E E at Takeometrics dot com. Yoni, I'm not going to give yours away unless you want to, but J McGee. Oh, give it away. It's, uh... It's my name plus M, like M and M. So Yoni M Agatita dot com. Yoni, Yoni M is M Mary. Yeah. Yeah. Agatita dot com. Yeah. So anybody at oh. any time, we'll be happy to help anybody you know uh, reaches out. Yes, I will. A few more questions here. Um, Lauren, only one right. Can't change your answers, but you know what? A A for effort on on playing. Um, what was it? Take a code for Gatita. Take a one hundred. Um, yeah. and T E I K A. Um, you're going to share a landing yes, page we'll later. Later on, we're going to give a link. So whoever used that you know, landing page will probably automatically put your promo code inside. So it makes it easier. Awesome. Great. Well, look, guys, thank you all so much. Yoni, you are the man. I don't care what Max thank says you. about you. I think you're good. <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks, brother. Really. Max is my uh, CEO and partner. So uh, they have you know, a, a good battle of uh, if I'm a good boy or a bad boy. So I'm happy I proved myself uh, worthy today. So I appreciate I, it. I love it. I love it, man. No, all good. But well, thanks, brother. Really appreciate it. Thank you all so much. Got it. Thank you, guys. Thanks, bye.